When Bioshock 2 first released, I remember the reception being rather lukewarm. People didn't seem to care too much about it, and some people really didn't like it. However, when I released my video of Bioshock 1 a couple of weeks ago, I noticed something strange. Bioshock 2 seems to have had a bit of a renaissance. Many people were claiming Bioshock 2 is the best Bioshock game, which is something I never heard back in the day. Hey, Jarek here, and I played Bioshock 2 once on launch. That was a long time ago, and I remembered basically nothing. So I had one question coming into this game. Is Bioshock 2 better than Bioshock 1? Don't ask how I can breathe underwater. But before I can get to that question, I had a few other questions. I knew people had strong opinions about Bioshock, but my god, I was not prepared for how strong those opinions are. When I posted that video of Bioshock 1, there was a lot of hate directed at Bioshock 1. I had a few theories as to why, so I ran a poll. That poll asked, do you think Bioshock is overrated? It got 8.3k votes. 80% of those votes said no, 20% said yes. So that confirmed what I thought. The people that hated Bioshock were just the vocal minority. But 20% is not an insignificant number, that's 2 out of every 10 people. I had another theory. So, here came another poll. I asked, which game is better, Bioshock or System Shock 2? This one got 6.5k votes, 71% of people said Bioshock was better, 29% said System Shock 2 was better. Now, there's two reasons why Bioshock could have pulled better. The first one is just that more people have played Bioshock, as many people correctly pointed out in the comments. But the second one is something that all of the people that really like System Shock 2 completely looked over, or at least didn't want to acknowledge. You see, most of those comments, not all, but most of them saying System Shock 2 were better, were extremely condescending. And this is how almost all of the comments went on the videos, on the polls, didn't matter. This shit is almost video game politics. It said something along the lines of, Bioshock is just baby's first immersive sim, they dumbed down my favorite genre, it's stupid, it's garbage, System Shock 2 was so much better, you're dumb if you like Bioshock more, you ruined my video games. Basically, they're doing this. But they can't seem to wrap their head around something really simple. The vast majority of people aren't huge fans of immersive sims. This isn't exactly a revelation. A really good immersive sim comes out, like Prey 2017, and never sells as well as people think it should. The reason is not because people have smooth brains and they just want to play Call of Duty. No, it's because their personal preference is that they like more direct shooters. I'm really hard pressed to call Bioshock an immersive sim. If anything, at this point, it's so streamlined that it's just a first-person shooter with RPG mechanics, whereas System Shock 2 is definitely an immersive sim. That's a controversial opinion, but I will stand by it. The reality is that people that really like immersive sims are the minority. People that like action games and direct first-person shooters are the majority. So those are the games that are going to be made more. They're not stupid because they have that preference, they just like something different from you. Don't be this guy, this guy is an obnoxious dick. If you are this guy, please shut the fuck up. With that out of the way, we can finally move on to Bioshock 2. First question to go over, is Bioshock 2 as bad of a PC release as Bioshock 1? Thankfully, no, it's better. That says absolutely nothing because it's still not a great PC port. Bioshock 1's port is just that bad. And just like with Bioshock 1, the remaster edition is even worse. There's no reason to play it. So you have some fixes before you can play the PC version, but thankfully not many. The biggest issue that was fixed is the aim. It no longer is awful, thank God. You can turn off aim acceleration in the menu. This does exactly what it's supposed to. Aiming feels perfectly fine. Although it does still have that really weird issue where as soon as you load in, the aim is really slow. I don't know why this is. Bioshock 1 did this too. For the first 30 seconds or so, you just can't aim. Eventually it fixes itself. This is kind of a non-issue, but I'm really curious as to why it does this. Like what in the code causes this? The next problem it shares with Bioshock 1 is that it has a narrow FOV of 75 with no way to change it in game. But this is very easy to fix with a program called Flawless Widescreen. It doesn't cause any issues in game, your arms don't bug out or anything like that, so really not a big deal. But there are two new issues that Bioshock 1 didn't have that are actually really big deals. The first one is that audio mixing is totally broken. This has been the case since the latest patch. This is easy to fix though, you just download an any file, drag and drop, and now your game works as intended. So again, not a huge deal. The other really big deal I ran into very quickly is that this game crashes constantly. And when I say constantly, I mean like an unplayable amount of constantly crashing. And you're playing as a big, big daddy, that's pretty cool. The game crashed. My god, this game is crashing a lot. Uh, hold on, give me a search 
I found out this is because by default, the texture memory streaming limit is really low. But this is again a really easy fix. You just raise it in any file and there you go, game stops crashing. I played the game for 11 hours in total, and after I made this change, it only crashed once in that entire time. The fixes you need to do for Bioshock 2 are much simpler, and overall the experience is a lot more smooth than Bioshock 1, so as a port it is definitely better, although still not great. So point one to Bioshock 2, I guess? That's not how I'm deciding which one is better, but if you want to follow along. The next thing I briefly want to touch upon are the graphics. And they're the same. You're in Rapture again, same engine, looks the same. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong, I love it but it is still the same, with one exception. This time, you play as a big daddy. And the little attention to details, I find so cool. You remember in Bioshock 1 where a big daddy was walking by and the entire screen shook? Yeah, well that's you now, and the screen shakes anytime you jump off of something or just jump in general. There's also all these little tiny touches, like whenever you walk underneath water it makes the audio of it hitting your helmet, it's just really cool. But the thing I love the most about this new edition of playing as a big daddy and that's the ability to walk underwater, outside in Rapture. <sighs> this is awesome. We spent the entire first game looking out there, just seeing the open ocean, but not having a chance to really go out and properly see it being cooped up inside. Well, no longer. All of this open space, all of this ocean, you can go out there, you can explore. At least to the linear sections of the game, but I don't care, damn it, this is cool. Before I continue, if you're enjoying this content, then consider subscribing. I'm pretty close to 250k subs, I would really like to make it there. Also, huge thanks to my YouTube members, they get to see my videos one week ahead of time, there they are right over there, you could join them. Okay, I guess the whole playing as a big daddy deserves some explanation, so let's talk about the story. As a big daddy, you have a little sister you will defend to the death. Well, this game starts in 1958. You get separated from your little sister, and Sophia Lamb does this to you. There we are. He's perfectly safe now. This is not your daughter. Do you understand? Her name is Eleanor, and she is mine. Now, kneel, please. Remove your helmet. Take the pistol. Place it against your head. Fire. Okay, being forced to commit suicide is one hell of an opening that I don't think would have been made in today's AAA space, but it got my attention. You wake up 10 years later, in 1968, after the fall of Rapture, and Andrew Ryan has died. As it seems, Sophia Lamb, the same person that made you commit suicide, has taken over Rapture. And your little sister is still alive, by the name of Eleanor Lamb. Yes, the daughter of that person. You will quickly come to hate Sophia Lamb, and I say that in a way that's good for an antagonist. She just constantly badgers you and insults you and treats you like the worst thing on the face of the earth. According to her though, you stole her daughter and turned her into whatever the hell a little sister is. So it makes sense. Problem is, as a big daddy, you were psychologically linked to your little sister. If you're separated for too long, you die. So that's the main goal of the game. You need to get to Eleanor. A lot happens in between. I'm gonna skip over all of that for now and come back to it. Sophia is a controlling mother to say the least. The end result is Eleanor choosing you over her own mother. This is something I feel a lot of people can relate to. Your family expecting you to choose them over everyone else. Blood is not stronger than friends when blood is insanely toxic. If someone is toxic in your life, cut them out even if they happen to be your family. And that's effectively what Eleanor does. She cuts out her mother. How she does so entirely depends on a few moral choices you chose in the game, but 
she does at the end of the day. I glossed over a lot there because I feel the general world building and lore they add into Bioshock 2 is more interesting than the actual direct story. And that's a problem because Bioshock 1 didn't have that issue. In fact, I played Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2 only once on launch for both of them. And for Bioshock 1, I remembered everything almost. For Bioshock 2, I remembered nothing. I might as well have been playing this for the first time ever. What I find Bioshock 2 is really about is telling people how Big Daddies came to exist. What is their role and function in this world? They aren't just a mini boss, they're something much more. Well, for starters, you're not really a regular Big Daddy. You are an alpha prototype, more or less. You're one of the first. What this means in a gameplay sense is just that you're less tanky and slow and faster, but you're still a powerhouse. Here's what you learn about the Big Daddy origins in this game, and I hate the fact that I have to say the words Big Daddy origins. Anyway, Rapture finds Adam, and Fontaine creates plasmids for monetary gain. The slugs that produce Adam integrate better into females as opposed to males, so they open a daughter orphanage to collect little girls through nefarious means. The Big Daddies are created in response to people getting addicted to Adam and being willing to kill little sisters. As you already know, Big Daddies are telepathically linked to their little sisters. They will defend them to the death. But you get a little more insight into how messed up this is, how they find their little sisters, how they ended up in the orphanage, and how the Big Daddies came to be. One specific voice recording is really telling. Ask yourself, Mr. Meltzer, is it better to be summarily executed as an outsider caught within these grounds, or to be united not just with your daughter Cindy, but with the Rapture family as well. A choice is yours. I urge you to accept the Protector program. You will live by her side and remember nothing beyond your love for her. <laughs> I wasn't the first to find Rapture, you crazy bitch. And I won't be the last. You do whatever you want to me. As long as I'm with Cindy, I'm, I'm a happy man. Yes, just to stay near his daughter. That man bent to Sophia's will and allowed them to turn him into a big daddy. And the fact that you have your own will and you're making your own choices can lead you to believe that big daddies as a whole have their own will and make their own choices. Suddenly, you're not just murdering something for Adam, you're murdering who could have been the father of the sister you're trying to grab. And you do get a lot of choice in this game, at least compared to Bioshock 1. While playing through Bioshock 2, you get the choice to either spare or murder three different people. The first one is a woman that hates you and tries to get people to kill you because she thought you stole Eleanor. It's a misunderstanding and that's as far as it goes, so I think most people spared her. The second one is a journalist who was hired by Andrew Ryan to try to get dirt on Sophia. He succeeded, Sophia was grabbed and put into a correctional facility, and he was the one that ended up grabbing Eleanor. Sparing him or murdering him suddenly is a lot harder of a choice. The last one I have some problems with. This guy is going insane. You know he's going insane because he has pre-recorded messages from before he went insane telling you to please kill him when you find him. Hello again. I... I have been exposed to a massive dose of substance, Adam. By the time you hear this, I will have armed this facility's defenses en masse. You, my friend, must therefore penetrate them and kill me. Please believe that if I could have done it myself, ah, uh, and on that cheery note. <laughs> whatever you may have seen inside the tank, that was indeed me. I see you out there, Delta. You want to be top man? You want to sit in the big chair? Well, come and take it. Yeah, that's him, and he's gone mad. He's also responsible for a lot of the orphans. Killing him is considered a negative thing, which is confusing to me. Killing him seems like the correct choice here. That doesn't seem morally wrong. This is obviously a put him out of his misery situation, so I, I don't know. Each one of these chapters are kind of their own small story. And like I said, I find them more interesting than the overall plot. And I also find the lore more interesting than the overall plot, which is again a problem because I never had that issue with Bioshock 1. Adding cool lore and story isn't something that can make Bioshock 2's story better than Bioshock 1's, because Bioshock 1 is what introduced the entire rapture and situation to begin with. As far as story is concerned, I think Bioshock 1 is definitely the better game. 
But I'm not saying that in a way that makes Bioshock 2 an awful story. No, I think Bioshock 2's story is well above average. Bioshock 1's story is just really good. And now we move to the part of the game where most people seem to agree Bioshock 2 did it better. The gameplay. I'll assume you have watched my Bioshock 1 video or played the Bioshock game, so I won't bore you with the bare basics of how Bioshock plays. You know what plasmas are, you know what guns are, you know how this works. Instead, I'll talk about what Bioshock 2 does indeed do better. The first one is plasmid usage. You can always use your plasmids. You don't need to swap to them to shock whatever. You always have them ready to go. Thank God, this is huge when it comes to the gameplay. I ended up experimenting with these plasmids so much more in the second game than the first one, simply because they were less of a hassle to use. The shock plasmid is still the one you'll probably end up relying on the most, until later on in the game, where you get bees. Holy hell is this plasmid overpowered. It does so much damage over time and completely stuns the enemies, including the bigger enemies. Even better, the bees don't randomly attack big daddies you don't want to attack. Yes. Finally! Another plasmid I used a lot was the ability to put down a target that enemies will attack. Tier 2 and Tier 3 versions of this target will make it so that enemies harm themselves when they attack it and give you health when they attack it. These three plasmids work together really well. Throw a target out that they will immediately attack and ignore you, throw bees out that will constantly do damage and hit everyone, and then shock one of them to completely stun lock all of them. There are many other plasmids, but you get my point. It gives you a reason to experiment. And then we get to the weapons, which is really interesting to me. Since your left hand is always using plasmids, you only have one hand for your guns. I remember I was a little disappointed when I first played Bioshock 2 that you didn't have the Cole Thompson and the pump action shotgun. At the time, everyone was getting into Call of Duty and getting into quote unquote gun. Nowadays, I can look back and appreciate these designs for what they are. Really unique and really cool. One of my favorites is definitely the spear gun because it launches people and you know how much I love really stupid old ragdoll. I really wish we could go back to how Ragdoll used to be in the mid-2000s, where enemies would just get launched whether it made sense or not. But my favorite weapon of the game is probably the iconic drill. You can either beat them with this massive drill, What's the you can use it like a regular drill, or you can do the iconic launch with the drill. Wait, can I? Aww. Look, I'm trying to play with fish here, okay? Let me have fun. This thing becomes really strong. There's even a gene tonic that allows you to use only that drill, making your plasmids use way less atom, but you can't use any of your guns. Sounds like a really fun challenge to play through Bioshock 2. Of course, the plasmids and new weapons don't mean anything if you have nothing to use them on. And there are some new enemies. The first new enemy is this roided out dude. He throws shit at you, gets angry at you, kinda acts like the brutes did in Halo. It gives you something to use your AP rounds on, and that's pretty fun. But the next new enemy I think is more interesting. And that's other Alpha Big Daddies. God, do I hate that I have to say the words Alpha Big Daddies. Anyway, these are Big Daddies that have less health, but are much faster. And if you want to take on the best of both worlds, there are the Big Sisters. These have a lot of health, and they're very fast. Strongest enemies in the game. These come around after you saved enough little sisters. They don't like you taking them away from her. These are the newest of the last in line, but since they were running out of little sisters and out of time, it was a dead end. Bioshock 2 also has a few returning mechanics from the first game that have been drastically improved. For example, the hacking is so much less tedious in this game. In the first game, you were going to spend so much time in that stupid hacking minigame. But in Bioshock 2, this plays out in real time and is just much faster. That isn't to say it's flawless, because it is still kind of tedious having to do it this much. And also, I swear this minigame is a lie. How is that not a successful hack? How? Somebody tell me. The next thing they drastically improved is the obnoxious photo mechanic in the first game, where if you take photos of the enemies, it will give you passive boosts. This works effectively the same way in Bioshock 2, but now you have a video camera and it doesn't interrupt combat anywhere near as much. That said, I still don't like it. Having to pull out your camera and even start it before getting into a battle is just annoying. Better, but I don't see why this mechanic even needs to exist in the game. Then there are entirely new things that just didn't exist in the first game. For example, since you play as a big daddy, you now have to defend little sisters. Kind of. 
You still have the option to kill a big daddy and then harvest the little sister, so if you want to be evil, go right at it. But if you want to save them, you put them on their back and they will ferry you around to two different bodies. The little sister will then start taking Adam out of this body, and while she's doing this, you need to defend her. Once the little sister has done this to two different bodies, you can safely take her to a vent. I know a lot of people really don't like this mechanic because it takes a lot of time, but it didn't really bother me. The last new mechanic I want to mention is that for one brief section, you control a little sister. This wouldn't be much to write home about. However, it's fascinating how the little sister sees the world around you. She sees the world as if Rapture never collapsed, as if everything is brand new, until you come across a body full of Adam. Well, that's fascinating and terrifying at the same time. So yeah, as far as gameplay is concerned, Bioshock 2 is definitely a lot better than Bioshock 1. It even just feels less janky, like something about the gunplay just feels natural. At least more natural than the first game, which isn't very hard. So where does this leave us? Is Bioshock 2 better than Bioshock 1? Well, it depends. I think Bioshock 2's reception on launch is because of one really crucial bit of information. We had already gone to Rapture before, and this was no longer a new experience. This is something you'll see in a lot of other franchises. The best analogy I can make is Far Cry 3 to Far Cry 4. Far Cry 3 is when Ubisoft finally figured out their open world formula. It was new and fresh at the time. Everyone wanted to play it. But then Far Cry 4 came out and it was more or less the same but it did objectively have gameplay improvements. Grappling hooks being scattered around made it so you don't have to walk around entire hills and mountains. It had an entirely new roster of weapons and all of Far Cry 3's weapons. There were new enemies, new animals, new region that was just as big, if not bigger. Gameplay-wise, it was just objectively better, but story-wise, it wasn't. It didn't have Voss to hook your attention. Pigamin is good, but he's no Voss. The result is that a lot of people were disappointed by it. But considering Far Cry continued to release new games, it didn't have the renaissance that Bioshock 2 did. My conclusion personally is that I think Bioshock 2 is better for repeat playthroughs, but for the first playthrough, Bioshock 1 is the better game. You're never going to remove the experience of going into Rapture for the first time, and you'll never forget the twist that story had. In comparison, I just forgot everything in Bioshock 2. I didn't remember it at all. So as janky as the first game feels nowadays, I think I would still have to give it to Bioshock 1. But I will give a respectful nod to Bioshock 2 for being a lot better than I remember it being. As for now, I think that sums up all my thoughts on Bioshock 2. Next up, my Nervous Den DLC.